Hi there, my name is Caitlin Bandy and this is my channel Bandy's Books and today we are here with another Women's Prize shortlist review. Today we're going to be talking about Brotherless Night by Vivi Ganeshnathan. This was one of the books that I really enjoyed on the Women's Shortlist so I'm really looking forward to talking to you about it. This book was published January 23rd, 2023 by Random House and it falls into the historical fiction genre. Jaffna, 1981. 16 year old Sashi wants to become a doctor. But over the next decade, a vicious civil war tears through her home. Her dreams are sent off course as her four beloved brothers and her dear friend Kay are swept up in the violence. Desperate to act, Sashi accepts Kay's invitation to become a medic at the field hospital for the militant Tamil Tigers, fighting for a separate homeland for Sri Lanka's Tamil minority. But after the Tigers murder one of her teachers and Indian peacekeepers arrive to commit more violence, Sashi begins to question where she stands. When and one of her medical school professors, a Tamil feminist and dissident, invites her to join a secret project documenting human rights violations. She embarks on a dangerous path that will change her forever. In my opinion, one of the best things about this book is that it discusses a relatively recent piece of history, one that might not be as well known about in the West. Not only does it cover the civil war that ripped Sri Lanka apart, but it covers the rise of the Tamil Tigers, the divided allegiances within families and communities, and the politics surrounding the war. This is a conflict that ended up taking around 100,000 lives. I personally felt like I learned a lot from this book and was motivated to further delve down the rabbit hole of learning about the Sri Lankan Civil War after reading Brotherless Night. The book does start a bit slowly as we learn about Sashi's dreams of becoming a doctor and life prior to the conflict in Sri Lanka, but I didn't really mind that. It gives us time to really anchor into Sri Lanka, the setting, what's going on, and then to feel the ominous signs of war creeping in as the conflict starts to bubble up. It begins with little interruptions to life, a brother going missing, being forced to cook for soldiers, and then it descends into all out chaos and violence. I've seen criticism of the main character Sashi and there being a lack of emotional connection with her. The story is told in a distant and detached style and I think that that was the author's intention. Sashi is essentially thrust into a position as a medic in a field hospital in the middle of a war. It has always been her dream to be a doctor, but in those dreams, I think she imagined a hospital and a white coat, not a tent in the field managing the horrific wounds of war. In order to survive this type of position and be functional, she would have to keep a level of professional detachment. Additionally, with the many awful things that she witnesses and experiences, there has to be a level of trauma there. Having had firsthand experiences with a partner who had war-related post-traumatic stress disorder, I feel like that detached, cold look at things was very accurate. Sashi is withdrawn as a method of protection. She can't allow herself to feel deeply. She has to pack all of her trauma and emotions down so that she can deal with a threat that is constantly around her. There just simply isn't time for her to feel and process. This leads to a memoir style of book that is quite matter of fact. I think one of the strengths of this book is creating some really haunting scenes that will definitely stick with you. Without giving away anything major, there was a scene that had to do with a hunger strike, a scene that had to do with a female victim of a war, and a scene that had to do with a suicide bombing that all like were circulating in my brain for a week after reading this book. The reason that each of these scenes is so haunting is because of the deep emotional complexity that they offer to the story. They aren't black and white situations. There is a lot of emotional nuance that'll leave you thinking about those situations. Brotherless Knight also does a really good job of exploring storytelling and the way that it affects the outcome of the war once it ends. Sashi, her friend Anjali, and Anjali's husband take to documenting the war atrocities in a very objective manner. They don't favor any particular side. In fact, they're solely focused on keeping the stories of the victims alive, no matter the outcome. I like that this was included as so often the victors are the ones that control the narrative of what happened. Only the people on the ground documenting reality keep the truth from disappearing. I think that this is a particularly relevant theme concerning the things that are going on around the world with some of the different conflicts. Um, we see people using social media to capture atrocities and make it so that the world can't forget them or can't ignore them. Um, and I think that that is kind of similar to what Sashi is trying to do within this book. Overall, I think this is a challenging read. The subject matter is difficult and there are scenes that might haunt your dreams, but it is also a really important read. The best historical fiction gives voice to points in history that are maybe overlooked or aren't as well known. It forces us to recall parts of history that at times we might prefer to forget. Brotherless Night does exactly that. This is a book that I was predicting would be on the shortlist and I was really pleased to see it on there. I think this is also a very strong contender to actually win the women's prize. 
Um, I think that this is probably my second pick in terms of books that might win this year. So that's the end of my review. If you liked it, hit the thumbs up, comment down below and let me know, have you read Brotherless Night? What did you think of it? Did you love it? Did you hate it? And if you're not already subscribed to my channel, you know what to do, hit that subscribe button down below as well as the notification bell so that you never miss a video. And that way we can see each other again soon. Thanks so much for joining, bye.